Hi everyone, it's the English Slimmer here and you may be wondering what the heck is this home screen? I have never seen this before in my entire life and it is a game called Gone Home. I played this game over winter break and I honestly fell in love with it. It's not a very long game, it's probably about two hours long but it is incredible and the makers deserve so much recognition for this game. I actually got in touch with them to see if I could do a let's play on this and they completely agreed and so I wanted to bring it to you guys on my channel just to tell you and show you basically what this game is and how good it is. I did fall in love with it overnight, I played it straight through pretty much all night. Um, so yeah, I wanted to kind of build up its reputation on my channel. Uh, it is a short LP, it will probably be four to five parts, probably, but I think you guys will enjoy it. Basically the backstory is that this 20 something year old has gone away to travel Europe with her friends and she comes back and finds that no one is in her house and she finds these mysterious notes um, so she wants to find out what's gone on. So she does a bit of digging back and we shall see where that leads her. So we are gonna start a new game. Yes. Okay so we use WASD and we use the mouse. Got it. So yeah it will only be probably four to five parts. It's made by Fulbright Company. Incredible game. I give full props to them. Hi mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. Bye. So, this has gone home, and who you just heard is the main character of the story and who you play as in this game. June 7th, 1995, 1.15am. So let's, let's check our bags. Caitlin Greenbrier, Portland, 270, June 6th, 1995. So I'm guessing our name is Caitlin. Um, there is a note on the door, so let's go see what that says. Katie, I'm sorry I can't be there to see you, but it, it, it is impossible. Please don't go digging around trying to find out where I am. I don't want anyone, aka mum and dad, to know we'll see each other again someday. Don't be worried. I love you. Sam. So who is this Sam person, I hear you ask? Let's see if we can open the door. Of course, it would be locked. It's, it's raining pretty heavy out. Sorry if that's quite loud. I've tried to mess around with these. A Coke can. Well, not Coke, but ginger ale. Okay. Well, we don't need you, I don't think. Um, let's check out. Yeah, I've tried to mess with the settings and I just can't tell what's right and what's not. A cup. Okay, cool. That light is really annoying. Let's turn on this lamp. A plant pot. Let's open this door. A duck. A Christmas duck. And the keys underneath it. Sit down there. Oh. Okay, you lie down there. Let's go open that door. Press 1 to check the contents. Oh, okay, we have our passport. This is Caitlin. This is who we're playing as. We have our boarding pass and we have our house key. So let's unlock the door. Oh my gosh, it looks so creepy. Do I want to go in? Oh, nope. If this was me, I'd be like, I am not staying in here. Turn this lamp on. Read note. Direction to work from new home. So I'm guessing that's her mum or her dad's 
how they get to work. There's nothing in there. I recently, well not recently, but I've never played on this mouse and this mouse is so sensitive. I didn't realise it would make that much of a difference, but obviously it does. Let's go in here. Forestry service, Janice Greenbrier. So I'm guessing that's their mum. Is there, is there anything else? A board game. Over the Alps, a novel travelling game. That looks gross. Let's put that back. Um, okay. Let's um, head over here. So this is one of her trophies. A skull. Okay, cool. It's from Mexico. I cannot read Mexican, but I know that said Mexico. Spanish? It's not Mexican. I don't know. Um, it's another one of her trophies. Let's turn on this light because I don't like it being so dark. It creeps me out. What's in here? Nothing. Read letter. Dear Jan, it's so good to hear from you again. All this new house business sounds like quite the adventure. Remember the little- okay. Miss you, Rumi. So that's probably her mum's old housemate that she lived with in college. No, I didn't want to read that again. I wanted to close it. Okay, so, um, can't be bothered closing that. Um, that door's locked. A ventilating thing. Um, let's not go upstairs yet because that looks creepy as. We have an itinerary and pencils and stuff like that. Oh, we apparently have messages. Sam. Sam. Hello. Sam. Where are you? Really? I need to talk to you. Please be there. Hi, Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. Bye. Okay, so I don't know who the first two messages were from, but the third one was from us. Um, but yeah, the first two, they sounded like they really wanted to talk to Sam. And Sam is the sibling. Daniel. Sam, Daniel from the old neighbourhood called. He wants to come see the new house. Call him back. Mum, Daniel is a total weirdo. The only reason I ever hung out with him in the first place is he had a Nintendo when we were little. That was the excuse all kids used. If you had a Nintendo, you were such a cool kid. I remember I had a Nintendo 64 and I was like the most popular kid on my street. Um... What's this? We didn't check this. Oh, so that's all the moving stuff. So they must Dear be- Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm at a new school, and my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real, but I'm not gonna let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal, just like I was talking to you. So just before that happened, um, I was going to say they must have just moved and Sam just confirmed that for me. So yeah, they have just moved into a new house and um, it's a pretty creepy house, not going to lie, I don't think I'd like to live here. 
Um, there's just a heck of a lot of toilet paper. Okay. And a cute little baby. <laughs> for the softest bottoms. Well, that's nice to know that it's for soft bottoms. There's no one behind her, is there? No. That's good. Okay. Um, that's fine. I'm gonna close the door though, because who knows, it might be smelly. A door finally opened! Oh, okay, that that's creepy. I don't know if I want to go down here. I'm scared, guys. Um, I'm gonna keep that door open. Press 2 to check your location. So we are in a hallway, we've been in the foyer. Okay, let's open this door. Welcome, new student. Okay, so I'm guessing this is from Sam's school. Oh my god, you are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. I just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. <sighs> Great. So Sam sounds like she's having it pretty rough in school, and this is apparently a Psycho House, which makes me even more terrified. <laughs> I don't want to be alone in a Psycho House. What's this? Oh, it's one of the postcards. Hi Mum, Dad and Sam. I'm in Paris. I have done many Parisian things, including eating le petit déjeuner and wearing a beret. I'm going to have lots of film to develop when I get back. Sam, I'm bringing you back something from the Shakespeare Book Company, since you are my favourite sister. Love you all, Katie. One Arbor Hill. Weird. So... We obviously find it weird that they now live on Arbor Hill. There's nothing in there. What's down here? Not much. Let's open this drawer. Read obituary. Oscar Doc Mason. Oscar Mason, 60, of Boone County, died peacefully last month in his home. Mr. Mason was born on September 8th, 1933, in the house that would be his home for the rest of his life. He attained his degree in pharmacy at a young age and returned to Boone County practice. to practice. He quickly became a well-loved figure at the centre of the community. In the decades preceding his passing, he was seldom, seldom seen outside his home. A service will be held this Sunday at the First Methodist Church at 1pm. All are welcome. His survivors include his nephew, Terence Greenbrier, as well as, in spirit, the people of Boone County, to whom he provided wellness and comfort. So he obviously lived in our house before us. And DeSoto. I have no clue who this is. She's pretty though. I like her hair colour. I wanted to dye my hair pink at one time. I think I'll probably do it in summer. Not like all pink, but I mean like uh, the ends. I think that'll look good. Um, let's turn on the lights because this is creepy as. Oh, see this game. It just it just gets to me. <laughs> it shouldn't, but it does. <laughs> Okay, there's nothing in there. Ooh. Is there anything here? Nope. A three ring binder. Just put that on the table. Um, oh! Okay. Well, let's throw that over there. <laughs> we'll read the letter. Terence Greenbrier. Dear Terence, I write on what I hope and imagine is a joyous occasion. News, uh, news reaches me that you are nearly married to a wonderful young woman. I have had more than a little time to consider my past and my family and my thoughts. 
have often lingered on your development and welfare in the 10 years since we last met. Your mar marriage gives me much reassurance in this regard. You, o you are always welcome on Arbor Hill. I will hold whole stand if uh, I can't read the rest of that. Um, okay. Well, that's a letter from the guy who lived here before us. You can do better. He sounds really hard on himself. I'm pretty sure this is her dad's study. Um, this is a review. Okay. Random. Um, we have a book. The Killing of JFK, A Theory by Benjamin Almond. Okay. Oh, we don't know the combination. Let's check this drawer. There's nothing in there. What about this drawer? There's nothing in there. I want to find the combination. Uh, John Russell opened his eyes. Oh, this is the beginning of a story. Ah, it's all crumpled up. Telephone directory. Empty cupboards. Oh. Electrical inspection form. Wiring in the house is technically up to safety and ampage requirements. However, multiple layers of wiring have been added into the structure. The structure over the last 100 years. The system is frequently unpredictable. Lights blink out for no clear reason. Pressure on floorboards and door frames disrupts circuits wired directly behind the surface. Okay, this just terrifies me even more. They are unpredictable lights. I don't want to be in this flipping house alone anymore. There's unpredictable things happening. I'm not even going to switch the fan on. Let's go in here. Oh, it's dark again, and the seats, and what if someone sat there? Um, okay, no one sat there, which is good for me. Let's head over here and turn on this lamp. A coaster with something on it, okay. And a pen. And a newspaper. True stories, I was a teenage drag queen. Um... 90210, does anybody still care? <laughs> okay. Um, random. Very random. Let's open these cabinets. Go over there. Dad's second book, The Accidental Pararia by Terence Green Byer. Oh, okay, so her dad is a writer and he writes books about JFK apparently. Which is cool. Each to their own, I guess. I actually find like the whole JFK thing really interesting. Like my mum's, my mum uh, watches quite a lot on it, and I find it pretty interesting. The stranger under my roof. So this is obviously aimed towards Sam. They obviously have a troublesome teenager on their hands. Well, Sam sounds like she's having a really tough time in school, so I don't blame her. Oh, 0451. So that might be the code. Dear Terence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut it back. Even when it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non sequitures from the usable copy without heavy rewrites, the readers of Home Theatre Africa, Af Africanada, don't even ask me to say that word, want to hear about the quality and value of the hard work, not ruminations of your childhood. Okay, so he's apparently not doing his job very well. 0451. Let's go bu quickly put that in. 0451, 0451. I'm really bad with remembering numbers. 0 4 
five, one. Woohoo! Read the document. Dear Mr. Mason, please enclo please find enclosed your original document and a typed copy for your records. The note Authorized copy has been filled out at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. Okay, let's see what this is. I, Oscar Mason, possessing full competence of mind and memory, and after full survey of valued items to my name, do hereby declare this document my last will and testament. The following shall hold true upon my passing. 1. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, that I am unmarried and have no children. 2. I declare that I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors living or dead. 3. I do hereby bequeath every item of value of which I may die possessed, including the dwelling and surrounding acres located at Arbor Hill, as well as any and all personal property and moneyed accounts to my nephew Terence L. Greenbier Jr. of Ellis County. In the event that said uh, Terence L. Greenbier Jr. should predecess me, then and in such event the bequest to him shall fall and the same is bequeathed to his children as ordered by age and competence as stewards of the estate. I subscribe my name to this will this 13th day of August 1973 signed Oscar Mason. So this is Oscar's will and he left everything pretty much to Kate's dad which I couldn't imagine ever having someone's whole life given to me. What's this? Hey are you the new girl Sam? I'm Tommy. I'm at the back behind you. Wave if you get this and write back. Hi Tommy, yes, I'm Samantha, and yes, I'm new. What's up? I just thought, since you're new, maybe you could use a friend. I don't have a lot of friends either, and so I thought I'd ask something, if you don't mind. Do you mind? Yes, no. And she circled no. No, I don't mind. What do you want to ask? Was it just your uncle who went psycho, or does it run in the family? What a d-bag like why would you even bring that up especially to someone who's brand new in school and doesn't have that many friends you don't just ask them if crazy runs in the freaking family how rude i'd just go up to him and slap him where's the lights i want the lights the tv's on i don't trust this the lights all crooked oh <laughs> coaster why is there a coaster in there? You can go back. TV listings. So if someone wanted to watch The X-Files, which was on Friday at 9pm on channel 25. What was that? What did that say? It's mum's old work mug. Oh, okay. So yeah, she did work in the forestry service place. What's that on the floor? Matches, I'm guessing. Yep. Okay. Everything I try and throw just flipping falls back on the floor. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys. Um It's another mug. Okay, that's cool. A pen pizza oh damn it they ate all the pizza the greedy fudges hi cherry and clothes please find a pioneer unit with remote and cables we need a half page review for the october issue so that gives you about two weeks to get us a copy for edit okay so as we know her dad writes reviews and this is her dad's name cool cool um a highlighter Another fizzy drink. What's in this cupboard? Mm, VHSs. I still have a load of Disney VHSs. They don't even work. I want to turn that off because I can. Yeah, I have a load of Disney VHSs that are just like stuck up in my room. What's this? Making friends. Sam thought this might help. Dad. 
Aw, so Sam's obviously really struggling to find friends in her new school. And, aw, this is cute. You know that feeling where the first moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them and you have to get to know them? Well, there's this girl. I think she's a senior. She's usually dressed kind of punk. But sometimes I see her in this, like, army uniform. And she's always drawing in this notebook, looking so intense. I had no idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after school. Okay, so from that little snippet by Sam, it sounds like she's finally might be starting to make a couple of friends. This girl definitely seems to have caught her attention. And the way she talks about her is really sweet. Um, soda can. Hauntings and poltergeists. Okay, yeah. Here we go. We'll give you a really sweet message about a new girl who might become we might become friends with. And then here's a poltergeist book to ruin the lovely moment and make you think about ghosts and poltergeists and demons and hauntings whilst you're in a massive house all by yourself. Thanks, game creators. <laughs> poltergeists and hauntings. Okay, I'm gonna pull that back and get out of here because I'm scared. Let's finish up looking at this room and then I'll end the part. Um. Aww. The hev the heaven at the edge of the world. Samantha Greenbrier, Grade 2, Story, The Turtle People, Part 1. Captain Allegra looked off at the ocean. It went on forever, or so it seemed. Someday she would find the edge and get to the paradise there. Then she heard a cannon. Fire. Boom! It was the black pirate ship. She yelled, I thought we lost them at Horse Island. The first move, the first mate said, looks like you thought too soon. The black ship came up, up along the side. Captain Black himself came out on the deck of the black ship. He yelled to Captain Allegra, you're never going to find the edge. There ain't no paradise and your father, father were a liar. Captain Allegra yelled back, then why do you keep following us, you imbecile? How does a grade two kid know the word imbecile? I, I swear I didn't know that word till I was at least 12. The first mate yelled out, We'll stop you, Captain Black. We'll find the edge of the world and you'll see her father was no liar. The battle kept going until Captain Allegra's ship got away. Now west, she said, and the ship sailed towards the sunset. How cute. I remember writing stories like that when I was really little. I wrote one all about pirates and like... I spent hours, you know like when you teen teen things and make it look like a treasure map? I did a whole story base, <laughs> like wrote a whole story out and then did that to it and it, it looked awesome and I was such a creative child. The armor Andromeda strain, okay. It's dad's book he wrote, The Accidental Saviour. So again, another book by JFK. Terry, hey man, how have you been? I know you're a published author and everything now, but my editor, uh, Hi-Fi, whatever, has too much review work to do to go around, and he's looking for another freelance. Naturally, I thought of you. You were saying in your cast le last letter how much of a pain it's been trying to find a publisher for your latest work of literature. And writing stereo reviews is dead simple. Sit at home with a glass of scotch, listen to some records, and then write up how it sounds and then get paid. I've included some issues of the mag to use as examples. If you're interested, send some ex some samples to my editor and tell him you're an old college your old college chum Mike sent you. Here's the address. Do it, Mike. Thanks, Mike. But you can kind of tell that Kate's dad doesn't really enjoy writing up things. I think he just wants to be an author. Um What's this? Girl Scout role model. Tune. 
I don't know if you can hear it. Um, it's pretty quiet. It's because I didn't want it like overpowering my voice. Let's check out the sofa. Oh, yeah. Put that over there. Put that over there. And an examine a ticket. The Coliseum, the showplace of Oregon. Theatre 3, Pulp Fiction. So I'm guessing someone went to see Pulp Fiction. And is there anything in here? A button. Bratmobile. Well these all sound very punky and this music that's on is extremely punky. But I think that's all for this room guys. So I am going to end this part here. Um, yeah I hope you enjoyed and I hope you all keep watching out for the rest of this mini LP. It is a really fun game and I enjoyed it a lot so yeah. If you don't want to find out what happens I would suggest stop watching here um, but if you do carry on watching and I'll be getting this to you guys as soon as I can. Um, thanks for watching guys if you liked it please give it a thumbs up it means a lot to me and I'll see you in the next part. Bye guys!